I'll tell you what, if I walked away with scores like that in my high school, I'd be pretty damn happy. And it basically yeah. has an impact on every single round. That's yeah. that's where, what we're trying to get at. Uh, plus the entire squad playing as mm -hmm. they are. Uh, map bands, let's go for those. Show them. Uh, we're going to go to one of these seven maps and we'll go to... No! Lord Jesus, I'm so glad I'm not casting. Oh. <laughs> I didn't actually look this one up. I just sat here and just thought, surely now, them. surely they go I, somewhere else. And, I don't uh, see uh, any yeah. of those. I do it on purpose because I want to be surprised. And you know what? You want this everyone to see the real disappointment. <sighs> you know what? We, we, we can't be disappointed either, Milosh, because this is actually a pretty good map for both teams. So like out of any teams today who should go head to head on this, I think this is the map for both of them. So I'm, I'm upset because it's, again, I'm not upset for these teams because this will really show who's the best team. Okay. Well, we saw Xavier play against Electrify not too long ago, as a quick mention, literally uh, just the other day on Tuesday, 7-4 and four to Xavier. Xavier did lose a few rounds to Electrify, where Electrify were just mm -hmm. picking at members. DCH only really the player that showed up for them. So today, I'm hoping there's a few learnings and hoping Fab have done their homework. Get social media stats. Let's go. What do people think about this game? You can go and vote at R6 Esports uh, 8 pack. 34% for Xavier. Let's go. There you go. Japanese <laughs> fans really showing up at 66%. What do we all think about this, though? That's the big question before we I go. I forgot in. what I voted. I, I, I don't I know. Fast. I think this was a close I'm one. I'm very certain of my vote, Jess. That's the thing. There it is. No one cares about Commit. Gary. Shut up. Xavier, Xavier. Right. Hey, we all went <laughs> <in> for Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> I chose sure Fab Dairy 2020. Nope. I'm 99% sure I definitely put Fab in the sheet. I'm, gonna, production, I'm checking it for you. I'm checking it for you right now. Uh, I you, see. Um, I see Milos Unsaf, Gia Unsaf, Desertu and Fav indeed. Fav. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Huh? You got it right. Did I pick Xav or Fav? You got Xav as well, and Dev Marta oh. has Fav. Okay. So, uh, Me and Dev. Let's go. Dev is joining you, Des. All right. There you go. Yeah. Right. Guys, game is ready. So hat Gio and Oregon. Enjoy. <laughs> or again. I mean, ha we, we haven't had an Oregon together because we got theme park the other day. So it's just time to sh This is basically a shakeup. It's like the one time that going to Oregon is a shakeup. Uh, this is my sixth Oregon this season. All right. So uh, I've I've had a lot of Oregon too, but not with you. Come on, we've got to we've got to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's gonna happen, though, Gio? Story. You know what's gonna happen? You are going to 45 rounds today, I'm telling you right now. Because no, uh, last time no, someone I... had three casts in a row, Come on. it was me, and I managed to go to 45. So you're gonna be continuing that. You're already uh, one third of the way there. Why are you gonna do this to me? I hate you. Well, anyway, on that, uh, you know, bombshell, as some would say, Let's have a look at how these teams are going to be banning things. Now, obviously, these two played each other back in the mini major, the August major, the APAC North one, and Xavier went 2-0. and oh. So a lot of confidence coming out from Derry, and I assume James as well, but kicking things off with the ban phase, and it's going to start off with a Capitao. Well, Scatman is singing his own team song in the <laughs> chat. We, uh, <laughs> we're going over to the next couple of bands. He's gonna be Monty. All right. I mean, Monty not too uncommon of a ban, um, really nowadays, and especially in Oregon, I can kind of see it. But what more surprises me is the fact that there is actually no Harbridge ban on Oregon. I'm just having a look. So they played. They played on Oregon together before. And it looks like this is actually going to be really similar, if not the exact same. If Wamaya gets banned here, this is going to be the exact same bans that they had last time they played each other here. So now we wait. Mm, the tension's building. We wait. With a lot of tension indeed. They Will are be taking Wumai? their sweet time. Well, they seem to know it indeed. Is Wumai, okay. <laughs> We're going to get the same bans to come out. Exactly. What was the, the scoreline back then? Let me have a cheeky look for you. Because then we know how this match is going to uh, end and we Oregon... can just as well go to the next one. <laughs> Oregon was a 7-5 to Xavier. Yeah, take that, Des. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go down. All right. <laughs> and I guess like, the, the, only, the only reason we need to, to even have this game is, is not to see the outcome, but just to prove Derry wrong. Yeah, and, and, and James, both of them. Yeah, but he wasn't, you know... You know. Here? It wasn't that, it's just Derry was very proud of himself and kind of makes What is forty nine percent? No, it doesn't matter, but I was gonna say we have a bit of a change compared to that last game. Malusian Ace are now available, so you know, maybe that will change things up just a little bit. 
Um, a lot of hard reach potential is here today on Oregon on this uh, this particular matchup as nothing has been banned out. No touch ban, no Maverick ban, no Ace, Ace, uh, Hibana and Termite are also up. So, you know, good to see probably a lot of variety in, in the operate, uh, operator picks here on the attack, I assume. Yeah, and I think it's actually going to be really interesting to see how that does get utilized because as you mentioned, Ace and Malusi obviously available and straight away you can see that Taipan on the attack has selected Ace. So that is something that they didn't have available to them last time. And you can of course argue, oh well there are other hard breaches that you could pick. But Ace has been a major component in the Oregon games that we've seen so far this stage. He has indeed been... Um... The operators to be picked up quite a lot and i'm wondering as of why that is of course you have the opportunity to open up three holes the size of one termite charge um but they deploy a bit later so tr like you're more vulnerable to tricking so i would be saying like termite is still the, the more viable choice but teams are opting to go for ace often uh, well more often than not so i definitely uh, seem to have it wrong there but We'll have to wait and see until the end of the uh, season which uh, to see which operator has the higher presence. Now, when this happened before, uh, Fav actually had a pretty hard time on attack, uh, taking two of the attacking rounds that they were able to play. So starting on attack this time, this is their opportunity to kickstart their revenge tour and prove that they can stand up against Xavier, who were a team that came into the competition last stage and really surprised a lot of people by being as dominant as they were. So that's going to be Fab's main thing. And, and Derry mentioned on the desk that number two really showed up in their game against, I believe, uh, it was Electrify the other day. So he's definitely someone that we want to be looking out for to help facilitate their reclaiming of their dominance. Talking about that. Fav trying to gain some control. Number two is uh, present. Well, near the white stairs, but doesn't seem to be knowing that Napew is waiting around the corner, just hoping to go for a little bit of a peek. As we see two breaching rounds now being used. Number two is holding He's holding tight. He knows someone is going to be coming for a push later. Well, rather later than sooner or sooner than later than later. Grenade being used, not dealing any damage. There's a lot of utility right here trying to get Anagiri out of his position, but not really succeeding in doing so. Well, finally, the first pick does come in, but immediately Onagiri does get traded out. As you mentioned, they were looking for that pick, and it certainly worked. That does mean that the ace is gone. Exactly, that's right. And I don't think they had the opportunity to get any walls open, even though they're running very low in time at this point. 45 seconds remaining, and Fav are still yet to make make their real move in. Indeed, as Chloroform will be able to pick up a kill, but instantly trade it out again. A Scatman comes up. A drone has been placed in a flanking position. It was watch number two. Now he's aware of the fact that a flank might be coming in. But as you can see, Napier already rotating all the way out, not wasting any time about it. Wants to get back to the side as soon as possible because he knows as well, 20 seconds left means that the flank needs to happen now on this armory stairs right here is number two is moving in from the white stairs able to pick up one kill hoping to go for a second one but won't be able to find it as of yet as they line up there scatman able to get a double kill somehow once he also loses his life that looks so close but yeah you're right and <laughs> actually funny how the end of the round replay went to napew despite the fact that it was scatman who was last uh seen in the kill feed but because he died as well like, yeah like it just it was it was it was very quick <laughs> at the end but um yeah no good round there for uh for xavier and what it really looked like was that fav just needed more go power I'm not sure. Like, they took a long time. They didn't really open up anything with Ace, so basically they were forced to go from white stairs and from the window. Need to but as soon as you realize that as uh, a savior, you're just going to be able to just hold on tight from there on. So, I'm not too sure what Fav's idea was on putting the Ace in a vulnerable position like the, uh, like the big window. Um, I'm really trying to wrap my head around that, but... Xavier now going to the bottom floor. The mirror is being brought out to get rid of Malusi and a mute. Really unlike uh, 
like the fact that a lot of utility is being brought here. Also getting the Goyo, of course, to stall out. Jaeger to deny any grenades that might be coming in because just look at Fav. There's two sets of them on the uh, on the attacker lineup. It was something that they did try to use in that last round, and they weren't too successful with being able to find anything. Obviously, going for some of that utility, as well as I believe it was a maestro who was situated above where Shin, assuming Shin was the one playing Yana last time, was throwing the nades. The thing that I want to be looking out for in this round is, are Xavier going to be able to secure themselves the trades in the same way that they did last time? It's all well and good that Fav managed to get good kills onto the team, but if they can immediately be traded out, that's that still gives that first team more of an advantage in those situations. So something Fav need to be uh, very cognizant of, I think is fair to say. All right, Fav need to uh, make sure they actually open up properly now and it's a really dangerous position that we have Napu in right now if a drone comes into attic you might see him uh, be wallbang because i believe it is actually soft indeed nothing up there so quick wallbang could occur there's no uh, fell three cams for example for the defense to try and guide a wallbang themselves type on somehow really low on hp already might have been a c4 to come out spots the elbow so now we'll get the shot quite right yet. Yeah, Doe is going to be trying to uh, to go for a peek again. Staircase not really helping him. It's definitely very close. And obviously you don't want to be losing your ace that early again. But Onagiri still unimpeded and being able to hold this angle. He will retreat back to Freezer as they want to hold the control. But that shield in Pillar is still going to have to be dealt with. Once again, a lot of patience being exhibited by Fav Gaming here, and it's something that potentially was a massive letdown to them last time. Well, you're talking about Fav, what about Xavier here? Zafra goes on his drone, he's not going to be... Oh, just sees the spot there on the Jaeger, and that will mean Napier rotates around again. We'll most likely be going down to those main stairs. And Shin is waiting for him to come down. So there is two players of Fav right now occupied with that one Jaeger player of Napier who's wasting a ton of time here as the 52nd mark is being hit. And that means that as soon as this execute starts happening, he will be making his way down. He will be coming in for a late flank and the first drops are coming in as well. It's Shin, of course, with the, uh, with the Gemini. Meaning it's not, of course, a real body that actually will be utilized for it, but it's at least going to be giving them some information. Well, here come the nades going straight down the meeting hatch as we hit the 30 second mark and Fav really have no choice but to begin their push in. Pings out on the board, marking the locations of the enemies and the Gemini is going to be leading into the fray with the smokes to obscure. Taipon obviously sitting very low and Napier's going to start things off by killing Shin. That roam was never cleared and that's going to come back to bite Fav as they make the move in. But actually, they're going to be getting a lot of kills here. Red Sun does respond, but with really no time left remaining there's nothing fav can do xavier esports take their second round and fav they need to pick it up well i need to pick up napew because napew is the one that has been giving them troubles the entire time so far just agile as he is he's able to rotate through the side he's able to rotate through the map just able to pop up wherever he wants without anybody actively chasing him for example jackal is available if you're having that much issue with him just pop out a Jekyll instead of a Yana. Just get the information. Try and pincer him from two different sides. Get the information. Take him out. And that is when you can fully focus on your execute because two people are constantly occupied by just holding off the flanks. But Attackers if you don't get the actual guy because he's not flanking, he's just staying up there wasting time, that's exactly what you're doing. Wasting your time. It's actually really interesting you mention how useful a Jackal could be because when we have a look at when these teams played against each other back in the Major in August, number two's most played attacker was Jackal. So it's certainly not something that the team feel uncomfortable with bringing. It's just something that they're opting not to go for this time round. Attackers have located a bomb. It'd be oh so useful. What about a Dokubi or a line or anything, you know? Like, just get some information that will help you with clearing out that one roamer that is being so impactful. He might be on three kills after these two rounds. He might be like, well, that's not the biggest score. And even though it's still a 1.5k uh, KPR, I must say, 
it is it is like more impactful than you think because he single handedly wastes two minutes for two players, and that means that basically they're not going to be able to do their jobs. They're not going to be able to clear out utility with those impacts or they're not going to be able to use the grenades as they might want to. They're going to be occupied with other things. And the time, of course, is the best tool, the like, defense best friend, almost. And if you manage to take that much time away, then you're definitely doing a good job. I have to say, I love this, that Afro is rocking the TSM skin for Zafia. Definitely go and uh, buy some of those skins from the R6 share because they are absolutely sick but he's going to be looking down through the holes that he just previously made down towards the site but receiving a lot of gunfire in return means he's going to have to take refuge but eventually he will win out the engagement with onigiri the first one to fall that means no more goo mines are going to be generated and the fear of push no longer so much for fav gaming Really disappointed about Nagiri there, staying active that long. I'm not sure why he didn't just run away after he lost the first gunfight to some extent. Was unnecessary in my opinion, but right now Shower's control has been uh, retaken by DCH, or at least he's trying to retake it. So drone is spotting him out, so they seem to be aware of what is uh, about to come. Another drone located right here. The yellow pings are coming in. They have no clue that they're being spotted right now. Just a simple flank or a simple pre-fire could do wonders here. As Ratson sitting behind that explosive shield. The one that can just burst up into flames. Definitely not one to be there as soon as that happens. More drones being deployed. Ratson going quite low. We'll have to think about falling back now. Fav is definitely setting themselves up to win a good round here. As Napier now takes damage as well. They're all being chipped away ever so slightly. And there goes Napew. First death, or oh, second death, actually, on the likes of Xavier. A real lack of information here for Xavier means they are finding themselves getting caught out by their opponents. Fab Gaming suddenly in a position where they can move forward. They're going to bring down the shield that was hindering them, and they can actually go in for a plant for the first time in this match so far. Very close to landing it, and it looks like the Xavier are going to find themselves in a post-plant situation. This is where they begin to show up. Two kills straight away coming in. Red Sun's very low, but he's going to flank around the Shower's Corridor. He doesn't know this presence of number two, though, who's right here by the window. He very easily manages to get that shot. And the Yokai is in position to try and help, but Sky man is all on his own a one versus three situation with showers control having been taken means he doesn't want to walk in front of the rotate hole he knows where these players could be just checking things out and he hears the goo mine behind him but he cannot see where his opponent is time is ticking and it didn't even need to run out as chloroform finishes things off and puts him out of his misery landing fav gaming their first round of the game Almost completely blended to Nagiri dying early because that lost him a lot of pressure into the actual dining room. He could have been closer to the bridge. He could have been anywhere else as long as he, well, didn't just die there. Um, also, showers control. Where was it? No one was playing inside of it. You can see how much pressure that actually gives to the attackers as soon as they take it. They're going to be able to just play around it, use that Yana Gemini replicator, just run through, get some information out, and exactly... That is the way how five managed to win that round. And talking about the Yana, it's being swapped out now. We're getting that Ying into the play, into the mix. And that means Candelas will be going Defense soon. From being by seen a lot Sorry. of Ying. <laughs> That's fine. We, we have seen a lot of Ying. Um, it was something that... Uh, Q confirm. I totally escaped my mind. It was something that Q confirm have utilized both times that they've come to this map. And interestingly, you know, choosing to bring it um, here on the top floor. Tucker coming out now as well. Might be the extra information that Xavier need to be a bit more comfortable in the current setup to be able to locate where Fav is coming from and to shut them down early in their tracks. As uh, again, the ace coming out. Basically only really had an impact in the last round by opening stuff up, but besides that, not really seen too much Selma's being thrown. 
No, Taipon has really found himself in a number of unfortunate situations so far in this matchup where he's either been taken down early, just like Napew gets done to him. Number two, really sparing no expenses and ensuring that that's been done. They know that the Roma was a huge problem for them before, but are they aware that DCH is also playing a similar game? But as I was saying, Taipon has found himself caught out early a number of times, either very low on HP or completely taken down. So he hasn't really had the opportunity to be as prominent and useful in the game as he otherwise could have been. Why is he again going to the big window, though? Throwing out through drones there. I'm, I'm really confused about what he's trying to do right now as DCH. Gets tagged up, we'll have to rotate back. There was drones available, just spotting out his information there, and that is showing how powerful this current system can be. He's trying to create a bit of a bullet hole. Try and contest uh, the outside area from... Instead, a whole barricade piece gets blown out by the, uh, by the 50. Well, I'm not finding anybody yet. Yeah, I'm making sure that they're being very thorough. That's something that you can't say that Fav Gaming haven't been doing. But with Xavier holding on to control of these really crucial parts of the map this far in, I mean, DCH is playing so far up in Master, but in go the smokes, and that's going to start things off. But the Candelas won't be flashing anyone as no one is there inside of kids other than Scatman, and he had the bunk for cover. Onigiri gets the kill onto number two, and that's huge as he got that early opening kill earlier on in the round. With the Diffuser having been dropped, this is very difficult now for Fav Gaming. Oh, we'll Narrowly missing the that. C4. Nami's Chloroform will continue to live, but he has to somehow find a way to make it in through the big window. Things being evened up now, three versus three, but there's still a lot of time on the clock, relatively. Afro's gonna be taking some aggressive shots in, but the smoke is out and he can't necessarily see where any of his enemies are. Shin doesn't wanna rush anything, but that's gonna be Afro's job as he finishes off DCH. Chloroform brutally taken down into the ground and the Diffuser really will struggle to be redeemed by Fav Gaming, who now only have Shin. He's got to bring down Red Sun, the Goyo who's dancing around the Diffuser left in this hole in the wall. But Shin's going to go for it. Red Sun knows exactly where he is, though. All he has to do is peek around this bunk, and it shouldn't be too difficult. He gets the kill, and he'll get the Diffuse, and that will mean another round go into Xavier's hands after a bit of a messy round from Fav. <sighs> that one could have gone way different. I don't think Redson was expecting the Yang to be already done planting and already that far back because, I mean, it was two meters and you might think it's not that much, but if you expect him to be right hugging the closet uh, and suddenly he's two meters back, that might actually scare you. He managed to pick up the kill nonetheless. That means that Xavier will win that round. Brings it up to 1-3 right now. Taipan, they get, like, did we see any Selmos actually go off? I'm, I'm like, wondering because the, he, he, he keeps on being brought, but I don't really hear any of the Selmos detonate. He certainly doesn't seem to be going to the parts of the map where you would expect him to be. Oftentimes we've seen the Ace particularly focus more on the games room wall. And we noted it in the round. DCH was playing so far up in Master, he opened up the hole in the barricade to try and deter anyone from even going there. But the Master balcony was completely vacant. He didn't have to really turn his efforts to that part of the map because Fab weren't sending anybody there. And this is why I'm so confused. Nobody would either go attic or you would be going to the master bedroom. You open up from there. And that is how you execute Ghost Wolf. But for some reason, every single top floor push we've seen so far is white stairs and big window. There, there is nothing else. No walls have to be opened up. Just open up the window. That's it. And it's, it's an interesting take for a team that is choosing to bring two hard breaches. And maybe they'll change things up as they head down into the attack that will be on the basement. Now, last time this site was come to, um, Xavier managed to defend it pretty successfully. So, Fab Gaming will have to change some things up if they hope for their own success this time round. They definitely have to change things up here. And this time, indeed, well, 
a tower take seems to be uh, seems to be coming in, but of course attic not really that important now. We saw this last time around where as well, uh, Napier actually laying prone in that attic, just hiding, trying to go for a flank, just making sure he wouldn't be spotted out. And well, it worked out wonders for him. Not quite sure where he is right now. I believe he might be on the site actually, if I look at all those red outlines. Indeed he is. And that will make sure that there is not gonna be any roam. Unless one of these three staircases will not be helped by any of these five players and he finds himself a way up. Now, if I have to choose the staircase that that will be from, probably Freezer, because Freezer often really getting that much love from flank watches. Well, Onogiri is going to be placed there, so should anyone come down, he'll be ready, especially with the Malusi Wub Wub just prepared to slow down any opponents who may decide to take that route. You, you mentioned the the roamers. It could be something that Napu decides to jump out and go and do. He was very successful last time. And there you go. Fav Gaming have noted the presence of the Wub Wub, just sending Shin's drone down there now as Chloroform prepares to maybe take him through blue. But once again, this is very late in the round for this kind of, you know, surveying. And I think this is indeed the name of the game. It's a minute and still no control. You either want elbow control or you want pillars by now, or you want to have open up the meeting hatch and try to push from there. But instead, Fav, they're just hanging around, dealing with utility, just dealing vibing. with mute jammers. They're just vibing. They're, 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 that's, that's all they're doing, really. Not really able to, uh, to show up huge as of yet, as DCH has to fall back. Now he's careful and is worrying about the potential of a uh, attacker coming down freezer. The mirror windows are here still, and there's nothing to have against it. There's nothing they can do against it. There is no, there is no, uh, no, no Hibana on the board. And well, yes, you can use your Selmas, but if you're still gonna have to do that by now, it's gonna be quite late. And they start to rush in, and that's and the defuser town immediately. The smokes were there to help him out, but it doesn't matter. Great C4 from DCH, as they just are fully ready for Fab Gaming moving down. Number two makes that a 2K for himself as he desperately tries to cling on to what he can to save this round. But they're going up against three members of the defense with only a few seconds remaining and Napu getting two at the end basically secures that round for Xavier. Fab, you have got to pick it up. What is time? I don't know anymore. Oh man, don't ask me that. So Time so management, it's, uh, yeah. It's getting existential. That's what it feels like anyway. And I, I just mean, Fav looked scared. They droned down the laundry stairs. They knew someone was prone down uh, by the bomb chassis. They managed to <laughs> build up their reinforcements so that they weren't just sending one person down. They needed the support and... Obviously, that defender had moved by the time they come down, but with the mirror window placed there, it was just... They knew that they were going to be watched. I never thought I would say this, but I feel they're over-droning rather than forgetting to use their drones. Oh, man. That's a... I think I need to sit down after hearing that. They're droning the entire time. Like, there's three, four players just droning, and then they're like, oh... Guys, I think we messed up. There's 40 seconds left on the clock. We didn't even open up hatches yet. What are we supposed to do now? They, That's what it feels like. They need to be more decisive. They need their decision making to be clearer. Because, great, if you want a drone, if you want information, that's cool. You, you do you. But um, at the same time, you need to have some idea of what you're going for. And if by the time you get to a minute remaining, 40 seconds remaining, and you still don't know what kind of take onto the site you're going to do, what are you doing? Droning. Well, yeah. It's uh, they get the information because they want all the information, but they do not know what to do with the information. That is basically it. Like, they have all the info in the world. They know exactly where everybody is. But then they're afraid. And then by the time they're actually going to push, there's no one on the drones anymore. And then they do not have any information anymore. So it's like two minutes of inf information gathering. But as soon as they want to go for a push, the information is... Half of it is outdated at that point. So they need to find a good balance here. Between, uh, well, the decisiveness, as you say, and, and trying to get all the information that you possibly can. Well, 
Attacking onto this side is the only victory that Fav have had on this half of the game so far. So maybe they'll feel somewhat more comfortable, but obviously you have to bear in mind that Xavier will have taken note of what it was that Fav did last time and hopefully set themselves up in a way that's going to make it harder. Once again, the shower's wall has been opened pretty early, so you said you wanted to see Ace doing something. Yeah, but he didn't do it. There's an Ash charge. Because there was a softball right next to it, so that, well, like, it wasn't tragic. Ace who did it. I, as um, I said it, I noticed it, and I was like, I'm just going to go with it. I just want to hope. <laughs> oh, this just, is just hope just... they actually do they, it. That... All right. The nade straight next to the evil eye will be taken out. At least they got rid of some utility. And this is the big thing here. Last time Nagiri was playing around here and you know, that was the initial kill of Afro, but he's not gonna be able to find anybody yet. And there is gonna be showers control now as well. And here we have it. The two Selmas next to each other are opening up and we have one on the right who opened up the showers as well. So three Selmas have been used. The breach charge will follow to take care of that shield. And as that Battery happens, Napier falls now. back. They're just stepping back a little bit. Let them come to you because again, one minute is on the clock. And we're all in the small tower now. Nothing more than that. Claimer just got taken out on that long range by Redson. And he's going to be aiding a potential jump out to come through. But what we got to be careful for here is that the showers push is now coming through. The question is, is Xavier aware? Because if they are, they should be able to respond to it. And it seems like they are as the smoke, I believe, on Napew has taken a bit more of a passive approach to make sure that as soon as showers is being infiltrated too much, he's going to be able to respond to it. Yeah, they definitely know that that's been taken, and the fact that Fab haven't cleared out the Shower's Corridor could be their undoing if they're not careful. Vulcan Don't Shield is ready to get popped if they want to, but Onigiri is going to be getting that opening kill. And once again, Diffuser finding itself cold and alone on the floor, and Fab Gaming will have to work around that. Number two does get his revenge. DCH and Red Sun both find themselves falling on the side of Xavier, Napu adding to the club. And that means Afro has the opportunity to try and get the plant, but as you say, the Yokai is there, it's ready, yes. and the defenders. Something they couldn't do last time. Successfully defend the site as they collapse in at the very end. I was like, you, you didn't wait long enough. There's still two seconds left on the clock. Don't stun now. He's going to be able to start again. You do not have your second stun ready. And as I said that, like it instantly got shut down. I'm like, oh no, you messed that one up. But he still had a second one available in the room and uh, managed to actually get the second stun out as well. It was uh, it was covered off by all well, all kinds of diffuse and, and, and debris, or was it a smoke? I'm not quite sure what I saw, but he knew exactly where he was. Got that stun in, won the round, and that means it's 5-1. I thought you said, not completely sure, but 5 one two attacking rounds last time, right? Yes. They did worse. They did. Uh, on their defense, they took three rounds. So three and three, it's still not really what you want. And obviously, if they can only take three rounds on their defense, there's not going to be enough to give themselves the map. So they're going to have to pull it out of their orifice of choice um, because it's it's really been lackluster so far. <laughs> That's the yokai. This is just exactly like... Oh no, okay, you could see him, but it's like a bit misty or something, not quite sure. Like, the vision wasn't clear, but he knew exactly where it was, so. No worries. Be happy. Let's hype on running that space station skin with a banana for skill. You never know when you need yeah, it. Yeah, I love that skin. I think that's my favorite one of the tier one skins. I really like the headgear of Ella. Um, mm. But like, I really like the knee pads on NIP, for example. I love the knee pads, dude. They're so good. The knee pads are literally like the best item. And the gauntlets on Zafia. Yeah. If, if I can could we make combine like, can, them. Yubi, can we combine a skin, please? Can we like grab elements of everything and then make the ultimate pilot program skin? I would love that. Napew you won't hear a thing. did get stunned down, so he's going to be scurrying off. It does look right now like Xavier uh, <laughs> more decisive than Fab about how it is they're going to approach this because we're seeing the more traditional routes into this site actually being taken. Upside down repel as well from DCH sees that shield and is like, this is too good to be true. There must be an ADS right behind it. There's no way I can take this with my impact jet. I need to wait to make sure. Oh, hello, smoke. Uh, as Redson is 
lost this draw, but it's okay. He got some information back for it. We'll be cutting out a really small hole now, but it's going to be just enough to crouch through. And as uh, Xavier is trying... Like, this is the big difference between uh, Xavier and Fav. Fav attacked from white stairs and a big window. If you're looking at Xavier now, they're attacking from attic. They're attacking from armory. And they're right now trying to take control of the master bedroom as well. And as soon as they have all that, they'll probably still will have a player left to send up the white stairs or through the big window to try and hold down these rotations. So it's a big difference here, and it's it's a more dimensional attack than what we saw from Fafta come through. And the first kill already happening, a bit of a pixel angle being held right there in the kids' bedroom. After we'll be able to pick up a kill though, and that is going to be uh, turning the favor back again for Fav as they find themselves in a four and three situation. Okay. Yeah, double kill comes in from Reds and an AQ. It's going to be a two and two situation now. The pistol shot did not hit. DCH waiting, thinking someone will be coming from the back, but with a minute left, surely they will find out soon, as they do right now, that both these players are on the western side. Very aggressive start to things there from both teams, and now, as you say, they are in the two versus two. Number two gets some of his health chipped away as the shield he was hiding behind is finally eliminated. Napew, he is who you would assume would play very aggressively and obviously situated here on the ash, but lacking a lot of the health that he would otherwise need and no drones are available for either of them as both have been shot out. So unless there are some already placed elsewhere, they're going to find themselves unlucky. Lifeline getting ready to start things off. You have under 15 seconds. So Xavier don't have much of a choice. They have to make the move in, despite the fact they might not have much information. And to start things off, it doesn't work out in their favor. Number two securing that first kill. Can they get the second? It doesn't look like it's going to matter anyway as the time clicks away. Fav Gaming start to turn things around. The first round indeed on the defense right after the site swap and it is one they need because Xavier is only two rounds away from taking the win here and also taking it very very decidingly so it's going to be up to Fav to make sure that they give and put up as much as a fight as they possibly can as so right now probably downstairs will be deciding the laundry basement laundry supply I must say um and my question is here Will we see a split push coming in again? Will we see elbow and, and border control being taken and then sending one guy from Freezer? Because fast attack, they were just weird. Like, there was no real plan behind it, it looked like. Yeah, it just, I mean, I said it before, but it really looked like they were, they were waiting until far too late to decide what the plan was going to be. And even then, they didn't seem to play with the kind of confidence that they needed to execute such a plan, especially so late in the round. So, Xavier, you know, judging by, despite the fact they lost that last round, they, they knew what they wanted to achieve early on. And I'm expecting that to likely be something we see again here on their attack down into the basement. I have to wait. The Kaede is being brought out, a form of electricity. Attackers Haven't seen that before. It's Fav to be the first one to invent it in this game. But Shin is already going quite aggressive here. Might lose his life if he's not careful enough because he's going to get spotted out and going to be able to land the shot anyway. And Onigiri was, uh, well, running like a headless chicken almost. And that was your jackal as well. You I mean, you don't bring a jackal just for funsies. You bring him because you want to use the utility that he has. Not just the smokes he carries, but obviously the Inox. And he's got some pretty good weapons too. So it's a big loss. And Onagiri's found himself caught up in a lot of those early engagements in most of the rounds, I think, at this point. Pretty painful. And Xavier will be feeling that as they try to reconvene and decide what it is they're going to do. Of course, they have players like Napier, like DCH, and like Retson who can suddenly pick up two kills if they want to, if they really want to. And that gives them a bit of hope and a light to look out to as they lost their first player. Nagiri, who gone down, not going to be able to spot these uh, fluorized neon footsteps anymore on the ground. That was a bit of a, a, bit of a loss if you lose that one. And Retson just trying to chip away the HP off the actual hatch here. You don't need to open it up as you had to before as the HP bar is now there. I believe if you like knife and hatch, and, and hatch like 50 times, you also uh, also managed to open it or if you shoot enough bullets in it. 
That is unreinforced, yeah, of course. You're not going to be able to knife in the reinforce hatch. <laughs> Just saying, before people were like, you could try it three times. I don't think you might I run think, out of time. I think you run out of time, indeed, because they, they put up some HP bar and they said like, I think it was like ten thousand HP if it's reinforced, something like that. Not sure. It's not like ten million. The, yeah, they put up the numbers. It was a pretty big number. It could be something 10 million. ludicrous. So, uh, so yeah, um, that's how much damage the blowtorch does. Uh, it's just a lightsaber, basically. Anyway, Napew here with the first kill onto number two into the freezer. He's being instantly repicked, but with no luck, Afro has to try again. But as he does, Napier already rotated all the way back up and he's going to be going on his way up to the laundry area to try and join his team there. And again, we're not seeing an elbow push. We're not seeing a boiler push. It seems to be laundry this time. Yeah, smoke's exploding in his face. That's going to stop him from moving forward. And Red Sun and Scatman will both be stopped from moving forward by the defenders. Napew does begin to get some revenge, but they're still at a disadvantage, sitting with just two players on the team. Napew, he gets injured. That leaves just DCH. This man certainly can frag. We saw it in the statistics from stage one. But can he take a one versus three clutch in 10 seconds? That's the question. It's certainly going to be a difficult one. There's the next Toxic Babe canister. That's the last one remaining and Chloroform finishes things off. Fab looking like a slightly different team here on the defense and maybe there is hope yet. This is why you do not attack Laundry. It's just not going to go well for you. It's it's just so big, it's like that big of a choker point and you really need to bring smokes if you want to do it. You really need to bring flashbangs that just stun out anybody that wants to 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 take a shot at you. But if you're just going to be walking in like this, it's not going to go well for you. So, like, I'm, I'm hoping to see a different different kind of attack uh, next time we're, we're going to be going downstairs. But of course, first we have kitchen dining that Xavier will have to deal with. It's the off-site. That means Fav is most likely the weakest here out of any site. So if there is a site you need to take, it's right now, right here. I think... If Xavier can stop the momentum that Fav are now building up for themselves, this could be a pivotal round because that could get them back on their feet, back to what was happening in that first half. But, um, you know, they're going to have to actually get there first because if Fav can, can really, you know, go off the momentum that they're building for themselves and they can continue it on forward, then we could be seeing a different story. Also, we could be seeing it. <laughs> I was gonna say I didn't I didn't see the rehost was coming in, but it's a, it's a hey. I, I um, saw I saw the game freeze and I was like, right, yeah, time to it sit could be down. coming up. Time to sit down, <laughs> not have that standing up again, you know. First Barry's then standing up, Geo. How dare you? You know, it's like But I got I call of guard now as well. I can't so, believe uh, people know that I do that. <laughs> now people everybody knows you're seven foot tall for real. Like <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're going to Kitchen Dining, the new site to come out uh, from, well, Fav, um, really on defense now. Xavier needs to be able to pick one up here. If they do, there will be a match point and still have some more to go. The question is, will they? Will they pick it up or will they not? It's, it's difficult because they've looked at the start of their attacking rounds like they are far more prepared to be able to take on that challenge, right? You know, they we've said they've looked more coordinated, they've looked more, uh, I don't know, ready, prepared. But it's once you get into the mid-round and much later on in the round that Fav, with their power behind the guns, are able to just completely wipe it out and that's where Xavier have really been crumbling um so they they need to pick it up in those parts of the round because it's all well and good starting things off well but if you're getting gunned down before you have the opportunity to do anything you're still going to have the same result you will still lose you will still lose indeed and that means something needs to change and the question is what will change well I'm not too sure because they're finding the kills. They're just getting sloppy near the last 12, 30 seconds of the attack, really losing too much lives. How can you stop that? That is the big question. How can you make sure that um, you know that you're, you're not you're not going to be as as flawed in those last 30 seconds as they were currently? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's. 
part of me wonders if it's almost the the kind of opposite problem where you know fav were droning a lot and it's not so much to say they aren't droning at all but it's that they're losing a lot of their drones uh in places that they don't really have to be and so they are flying blind when they then go and run in and try to make these rushes in and you, you have players like napu and like dch who should be able to handle those kinds of situations but if you don't have the intel on the locations of who you're going up against and the people you're going up against happen to be people like Shin and like number two, it's going to make your life increasingly harder and it's going to make the round increasingly harder to, you know, grip onto. And I think that's where they're really failing because they're trying to take gunfights that are, are doomed. Yeah, just trying to find out now, just, just looking back at the previous round and we see the laundry push to come in, but there's no real utility for it. So I'm, I'm thinking... As we are going to dining now, you will need smokes. I'm not sure if they had operators on the board to bring smokes because I didn't get that far yet with noting everything down. <laughs> um, but if they don't have smokes, then they will have to go for, you know, an alternative take again because you cannot just try and go and plant without there being smokes available on the board because I believe an echo was actually being brought. And we know how that went last time around, you know, when the Echo was there in the in that last round and a half, they managed to yep. stop that diffuser from happening. So you really need to be active on the hunt for those players. And well, if you're going from just small tower, it's going to be a really hard time that you're going to be getting. So you also need to be going from the top, push down wide stairs, because that's the way that's your entry into, um, you know, the hallway of shields almost, because there's always like two or three shields uh, inside there. Like, you need to spice it up a little bit, not just make it one dimensional, not just go from one side, put pressure from elsewhere. I am actually very intrigued to see if Fav on their defense do decide to place anyone upstairs. What you often see is someone lying prone on the hatch that's just above the site because they get that perfect sight in. I think that was something that, that Xavier did maybe once but it, it, a lot of their defense was very lateral they put a lot of stock into you know the showers corridor area where they had two players and um it was very in the kind of same area whereas i think if fav can add that dimension to what it is that they're doing that will make it extra difficult for xavier especially if as you say they're not going to be playing smokes or if they don't make some kind of push from another direction at the same time sometimes you see teams like to apply uh, pressure down the meeting corridor as well if they want to pressurize anyone who might be positioned in the kitchen now, you mentioned that, uh, you know, if there's an echo, it could be very difficult for them. We saw that happen last time, but you never know. Xavier might take more care to ensure that yokai's are spotted out, they're gotten rid of, there's the pressure on the echo, whatever it might be. A lot of that came down to the fact that Fav just didn't try to get rid of the yokai's. Yeah, well, they didn't try to get rid of the yokais until they started firing those supersonic bursts and we're like, oh, wait, there is yokais? Wait, yokais? We haven't even noticed at that moment in time. That's unfortunate. If that was the case, we would have uh, changed up the strategy a little bit to make sure we wouldn't be planting within the last 20 seconds, really. But, yes, like, they need to change things up and I'm pretty sure Xavier is going to be aware of the fact that, well, if a yokai is on the board, they're going to have to try and deal with it early on considering they just played that game themselves earlier on. So... Often it's like if you, if you play it yourself, you should know the weaknesses of the strategy, of the setup, and you should try to exploit them if you ever play against it. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, just to keep everyone in the loop, the game is actually still being played while we're just sorting yeah. out the technical timeout. So it could be that by the time we're back in, we already find out what the result of this round was. So we won't necessarily know all of the details of how it was won by whomever it is who ends up winning it. But um, you know, it's obviously always good to speculate, especially as we haven't seen uh, Fav defend this this site just yet, at least not in this game. I mean, they might have come here before, and that's probably something worth looking up. Um, Fav won it. Yeah, okay, yeah, five. they did. They did. On round number eight is when they when they came here on the defense and they they did it but they did it by a site retake and a diffuser disable so xavier did actually manage to plant in that instance but judging by how fab had been playing in the late round i could totally believe that they were able to do it and actually yeah as you say four five they won it indeed they won that round and that means that we are now 
refilling up that lobby, you know, getting all the players back in. And that means we're going to get started soon again to go up to round number 10, where suddenly Xavier only has one more round of an advantage. And suddenly our predictions seem to be a bit shaky as well, because Des and Dev are uh, seeming to get a bit closer on our, uh, on our well, so uh, confident Xav win. You said that I was going to have a 45 round. I told you, I cursed you beforehand. It could happen. <laughs> I'm getting a bit scared. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it were happening. I mean, uh, <laughs> we're getting we're getting quite close now. Nine rounds in. If only one more round is being won by five, or at least getting 12 out of this one. Uh, and if that ends up in a 6-6, six, six, well, I can tell you it's probably going to be ending up in a, in, a, in a maximum amount of rounds over time as well. And then, well, you know, on the up to the next one, Scott has used his talent. In my books, that's also a quite close game um, because Scars have been improving a lot. Talon have well, been improving a lot. I mean, maybe because last time Scars and Talon played each other, at least in in APAC North, it was a seven-one. So you you never know. But um, in 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 this game, I mean, when we look at when these two uh, teams last played each other on this map specifically, it was quite a close game. It was a seven-five scoreline. So you know, we're not there yet, and it could end up being the same thing. It could end up being the same thing for sure. So you know, we, can we go? We want the best of that. <laughs> These players are actually going to be showing us that it is going to be a close game and that they're going to be here to actually bring it to at least maximum amount of rounds for like the regular time. And now, well, let's see who the victor will be. That That is the main uh, the main part. Sav did really yeah. well with a 5-1 to start off the half, but they're kind of slacking right now. Yeah, it was a very dominating, uh, dominating start there. And again, it seems to be a really overarching story that we see a, a lot in APAC, or at least in the, uh, I would say the mid to lower end teams, not so much the ones who sit very much comfortably at the top, where the defense is always very much better than the attack. For the most part, these teams feel way more comfortable on the defense. When it's another team who have to come to them and they don't have to, you know, coordinate the pushes, decide what it is they're going to do, make sure the utility is all gone, manage their time, all good things that you should put on your resume, um, they find it much easier. So we're going to be heading straight back into the game now. It's going to be round 10. Four to five is the scoreline. And it's still Fav Gaming who remain on the defense and they're coming straight back upstairs straight back up five as the site rotation has been completed three rounds in a row they're up against xavier now it's up to xavier to show that their attack that their loss just now wasn't part of strategy it was just purely due to uh it's how things played out. It's a good gun skill of five and that when they're getting their heads all together, all aimed into the same direction, they know exactly where everybody is. This should be their round. Shield still being deployed. Type on really uh, wanting to get the exact placement right on that shield. Yeah, speaking of shields. Something that we've seen before in the Q Confirm game from the first play day, they've actually placed a Vulcan shield in the closet and have a rotate hole in the games room wall. Not common. And uh, the first time that we saw this the other day was uh, was here in APAC as well. They did do a late reinforce on, on the wall. But this is going to be very interesting to watch. Because obviously to get rid of that shield, you're going to set the closet on fire, which is going to waste a lot more of your time. And there we go. It's already done from below. And now uh, Shin is basically stuck. Will be droned out soon, and now he has nowhere to go. Typhoon needs to be there to try and save him, because otherwise, Shin is a dead man walking. Scatman is holding off on the rotation here. He is really having to go for a big play here until he falls back. The question is, do they have a reinforcement left? Are they feeling the need to actually go and try and close up the closet here? Are they worth like? Are, are, they, are they willing to take the risk? That is the main uh, the main question there. Are they willing to wait and to try potentially losing out on one of your players to close out the closet? That's the thing. It is a huge risk when you don't know if anyone's up there. But they are also working on the attic. Are Xavier Esports want to get rid of that shield right as DCH is just firing in through the armory stairs window? Is that what you call it? Armory hallway window? It's a very long 
term to use. But either way, you know which window he's firing in from because he knows the type one's present in trophy, throwing out one of the Grishmots, but he has to watch his back as well as they know that one of those attackers is out on the master balcony. I believe it's called the uh, the Armory Hallway Single Window located at the top of Armory Stairs. I think that's, that's the call out. Really succinct. I love that. And we're <laughs> okay. Fab Gaming are going to be loving lap two. Napu being the first casualty, but number two is going to be eaten alive in return as the Candelas led him in. Afro, he gets a kill too. Onto DCH. That was a nice swing around the doorway, but it does mean the diffuser is now lost as Red Sun gets traded out by Afro. Three versus two. Xavier Esports suddenly finding themselves on the back foot as Onagiri has to try and take in as many shots as he can. Wow, okay. Narrowly missing onto Taipon there. He wins out that engagement as Scatman has basically got nothing to his name as far as health goes. And he desperately has to try and get these last three players. Uh, had a bit of struggle vaulting over the shield and that's really going to trap him somewhat. And now he's just got to use what he can. He threw out the smokes, doesn't know where anyone is. Such little time left. And of course, he gets shot at the end. It's always Chloroform, I think, who finishes things off for his team. But uh, maybe but not the, the best swing. round there for Xavier. The swing was quite unfortunate as Chloroform leaves the game. Oh, no. It's also quite unfortunate. Please. We miss you. Please come back. We don't <laughs> want to play without you. It does Surely even do things it. up. Uh, he should be able to, maybe. And it's still six picks available, so they might be might be able to use that. Please, please, for us I now. Mean, okay, they'll the probably rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go the again. They're, they're obviously going to ask for that rehost just to ensure that he is in the game. And uh, yeah, so at He's least not. we got to see a round. That was nice. One round. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say the, the swing that we had coming out of Attic was like he didn't know there was a second player there. If he would have known, he would have been able to go for the potential double kill. And also, some might be wondering, why was the smoke just standing there? Well, he was probably blind and thought he walked all the way into kids or something and then ended up against the, the actual wall. Not able to move out from there, got taken out, was completely blind, nothing he could do. And, well, in the end, Five still managed to win it, even though those kills going into the favor of Xavier... And that means it's 5-5 five, five now. And it means we're going back downstairs into laundry supply. And now I'm actually hoping, really hoping badly, that we are going to be seeing that elbow and boiler push. Because it has been proven time and time again that that is the one way that you win as an attacking team. I find it really funny because uh, before the broadcast started today and we were all discussing and joking around about the fact that Oregon has been so prevalent in the map picks, uh, one thing that someone said, I think it might have been Dev, was, oh, you know, for a while I was just getting sick of seeing the same construction blue push. And now here we are in this game missing it. We want it back. Yeah, like, it's good to see some variety, but it has to work as well, because otherwise it's just like, what are you doing? You know, if, if it's just completely being shut down, you're not even getting close into winning the round. You might have to go back to what works, to the basics of the map, which is the construction blue push, as you said. And it might be boring to watch every now and then, but it's definitely the one way to go and try and get that win in as an attacking team. And as we're trying to get the rehouse done now, I'm just trying to find out, will they do it, will they not? What kind of operators will they bring? Are they going for just the ace or are they reckoning and maybe bringing the termite as well to get a bit detacher as it hasn't been banned out like there's there's a lot of opportunities here to make sure that you get your walls open let's combine that with some smokes let's say some candelas uh, just toss everything in get that plan done all you need that's all you need to do just make sure you get that plan down and have your members still living after that because if that is what you can achieve then the after plan will be really tough for fab well i mean that is I believe it was on, assuming they are going to laundry and they're not going to be going over to meeting, but um, I believe it was on the last laundry attack that we lost the jackal really early. So you mentioned, you know, are they going to be bringing smokes? Are they going to be bringing that to, to facilitate and um, enable the kind of take that they're going to be doing? They tried. <laughs> they tried to do that before and... Uh, didn't work out. He got he got done killed. So um, 
that's that's something that obviously is is really going to be on their mind i yeah i have to agree with you i really want them to kind of do a more traditional attempt at a take work on those walls the elbow wall the box wall get them open make sure the meeting walls open they have been bringing the maverick as well so obviously that shouldn't be too tall a task um we did see yeah shin play the kaid last time but uh i it, it didn't end up i didn't think he used it on the hatch or I, 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 for whatever reason it wasn't a huge issue or maybe it was just because of the fact that they're playing it in such a bizarre way that you kind of have to look at it through a different lens um but if they do decide to do that it it does give uh fav the opportunity to deny a lot of that opportunity for breach but also at the same time you need xavier to be taking those opportunities you definitely have to take those opportunities and while well, Xavier is going to have the chance or the opportunity to take these opportunities soon again because we're almost almost ready to go again and just give us a traditional take please that is that's all i'm asking for that is the way how you get to six that is the way how you're securing yourself to at least go to overtime just make it happen Xavier please asking you kindly we definitely need it and and obviously <laughs> like these two teams have kind of really interesting stories from the perspective of Fav was certainly in the running for the, the best Japanese team. They sort of came out of the woodwork somewhat, um, gave Cyclops a hard time in the first stage, and then they sort of let it slip through their fingers as uh, they had a few messy games. Cyclops started to look way more dominant. And Xavier, of course, they were the, the almost like the dark horse that we didn't expect because Coming from the Southeast Asian region, everyone was looking at Q Confirm, who were the champions of that region, who didn't end up showing up as much as Xavier did back in stage one. So both of these teams have something to prove because they are now being outshone by their counterparts from their same sub-regions. And from, from this game, it kind of looks like why that is. It looks like we can tell why that might be. We need more decisiveness. We need more fervor. We need more just drive i suppose everything's been very slow there have been cracks in what it is they're trying to do but both of these teams have too much to prove and too much to lose to allow this to continue okay one deep breath before we get going taipon choosing to go for that warden which is an understandable choice given the fact that the ying was being brought quite an uh, quite a couple of times not going to be saving him now though there is two smoke kinesis on the board on dca oh, no, on dch on scatman running that ace and the think is also coming in there's four grenades and the likes of xavier of course there's three ads's you just need to find out where they are clear them out get those grenades in and basically start fragging attackers are moving out to locate a bomb. yeah this is a completely different look for xavier as you say on a geary on the thinker Again, something that we've seen Q confirm do. I'm seeing a lot of uh, homages to that, but you know, so far I haven't been able to yield the same kind of results that Q confirm could. But this is certainly going to be um, interesting because it suggests that they're changing things up. It suggests that they're trying something different, and I think that's the right thing to do because evidently what they've been doing on their attack so far has not been working. Definitely hasn't been working completely yet. As uh, drones are coming out, Afro on that roam, he's the one to find. There's no Jekyll, so you're not going to be able to spot out those footsteps. And thus, either Xavier needs to be really quick with her final execute. As he, here's a C4 being ripped. Might be tossed onto those stairs soon on the back stairs. As uh, the Fink is getting close, a grenade being tossed back. That's a bang to that. It's not going to be a kill. Not a single point of damage being done to Anagiri. He just tried to, uh, he heard the C4 rip, so he just pulled the grenade out himself, like the little pin, so he knew exactly where uh, he would be. And this as C4 comes out. It's a bit of a bait, it worked out, piece of utility wasted. Definitely a smart play there, as that could have really been the undoing, just as DCH is to Afro. Very good opening kill. 
and that eliminates the Roma who could have caused so many problems for the attackers. Down goes the nade, but it doesn't look like it's going to catch a person. Maybe if there was a shield down there, I didn't quite see, but I'm going to assume there was. That's going to actually force uh, that player to move on forward. Oh, actually, it doesn't look like there was a shield. Okay, they're placed elsewhere. Well, in that case, that was a nade that sort of went to nothing and uh, encourages a way more aggressive stance from Shin. Maybe expected uh, a little bit of a fallback because if we would be throwing it in that action now, it's going to be a beautiful one. Beautifully tossed in. We had exactly where Shin would be going. And that is going to be the double entry they need. Flashbang's going out now, but the Warden is not going to be affected too much. But he will be affected by these what? bullets as Anagiri will be coming in. Certainly it's a one and two situation. Still up to DCH and Onigiri now. This is the opportunity they need to put themselves into match point. They just need to find out where this player is. Where is number two? Where is he hiding? Because, well, he doesn't have that C4 in hand, but there's still that shield in that position that could potentially be for ending the round. If he is going to be able to just shoot that at the moment that the defuse will go down. And here we have it. The defuser will be planted. Three seconds left on it. A bit of a pre-fire coming through, but it's too late now to pop that shield because the timer hit 40 now. That means it's counting down. Seven seconds you need to get the diffuser off. That diffuser on going. And so a bit of damage is being done to Onigiri. It's not going to be enough, but that hatchet definitely will. 30 seconds, counting down. He's just got to find where DCH is, but DCH has no obligation to hang around here. And number two is running on very limited information. 20 seconds remaining. As soon as it gets to the seven second mark, it's all over. But DCH, he's holding on to the rotation here from the elbow wall. Does number two know that? He's checking every single angle, but he's just got to go for the diffuser because there's no time left. DCH knows where he is. He gets that last kill and Xavier take it to match point. I do take it to match point indeed. And right now, one more round for them to get this. To get this in the regular time. Otherwise, we are going to overtime. We would be going to potential 15 rounds. Maybe even 14, maybe one less. <laughs> but this is a very close one. Definitely at least 13 rounds. Well, at least 12 rounds. All right, let's just cover yes. all the numbers. At least one, at least two, at least three. All right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was certainly a close one. It put number two in a really difficult situation. Everything exactly. working against him. And when you're really running down on time like that, he had just over seven seconds remaining before he went down on the diffuser. He didn't have any choice. And of course, he just had to accept his fate. He, he probably knew what was going to happen at that point. And it looks like Xavier, knowing that it worked out for them, they're going to come and do something very similar on their attack this time round. Right. Here we go. Last potential round after Xavier was up 5 to 1. Fab managed to make an well, almost incredible comeback as they uh, got four rounds straight after the first half, but just lost out now, and that means that they need to fight for overtime. Well, Xavier are fighting for the win, and that is the big difference here. There is a lot more pressure on Fab, however, than there is on Xavier. Considering the fact that Xavier can afford themselves a little mistake was Fav. If they do that, if they make one mistake, they might lose this match. And again, we see that Warden being picked. Again, it will be used. And the question is, how impactful will it be? Because there is no Ying on the board. And you saw it like he was too busy trying to contest those actual flashbangs that he actually got shot on the back. Shield's already being taken care of as well. There's a lot of utility being dispatched early on. Yeah, so far a good start for Xavier as far as ridding themselves of the utility problem that the defenders provide. So that's definitely a, a nice start as they just continue to drone out. You have to remember, obviously, last time they had to deal with the Roma that Fav Gaming had. So they just want to be sure that that's not a problem this time. That's why you see a lot of this presence on the ground floor rather than heading straight into the basement. Minutes, 46 seconds. Sorry, I was just making sure I could time it properly. Um, and DCH is trying to sneak up. 
to the bottom of the white stairs, hoping to go into freezing, uh, Freezer. Taking control there, but there is going to be a Goyo playing. Number two, that is. A big man with a big gun on that vector. Hoping to uh, to make a big impact. Also has that Nitro Cell available to him. Be making some explosive ends if he uh, manages to toss it in at the right moment in time. So we're counting them slow. Seems to be falling trap for what Fav, uh, Fav had as well. Not having anything set up really to go for an execute. As uh, a lot of the hatches being opened up here, not sure if it's just a chip away from the HP or to create an actual line of sight. And you see this trick again, they just reinforced off elbow, but there's still a player in there. It's going to be a suicide mission, I believe that is from Shin on that Kaid. He's going to be able to get the kill down as the diffuser now dropped. And as your ace gone as well, Bart Goya will be deployed. And it's a very huge thing here. He's behind the Goya shield, he could easily be, bl be blown up here. But they need to take control quick now, and they need to get these brief fires down. It's exactly what they're doing as number two falls. They need to get control of that diffuser, and they need to do it quickly. They're all going to be in elbow, in uh, in the actual boiler room here. They need to push that diffuser, because he is still stuck in elbow. Are they going to be leaving him there? The blown up comes. He will be toasted. He will die because of it. And that means that the advantage is now in favor of Xavier in terms of numbers, but not in terms of time. They still need to take care of this warden. The blow up comes in. Typhoon will just manage to survive with about one HP, but he's going to get the blowtorch. No, actually, just not two seconds left. The time runs out. They need to run in now to go for the plan. Maybe you need to do it. There's nothing else you can do. The smoke and it's to come out, but it's going to be just too late. But it's going to be the cover coming in from Freezer. Five will be able to draw things up. Twelve. Well, the 12th round goes to them. That means 6-6 six, six is what we're currently at. The tenacity of Fav to keep themselves in the game. That one round they desperately needed to trigger overtime and they managed to do it. I mean, even just looking at the way that Xavier used their utility was different. Most notably, last time, the Finker used those nades to get an incredibly useful kill that allowed them to push down into Pillar and take space. But this time they couldn't do that as they had to use that, uh, those projectiles to get rid of defender utility instead, to allow themselves to go in and make the plant. You saw the shield right at the very end. They had to use one of Maverick's grenades to get rid of it and even then the smoke from the toxic babe canisters still coming in you didn't have a full read on the defender positions they could move on in holding from freezer holding from uh, um from further down in supply all they had to do was engage straight onto the planter and dch wasn't in the position to give the proper cover that was required so even though they brought out the same lineup it didn't play out in the same way. And now Xavier, who was so close to tasting victory, have to go through it yet again. All right, Xavier, again, you'll find yourself on the attack here. It's definitely favored towards five. Given the amount of defensive rounds we have seen being won, 10 in total, only two attacking ones have been won. Five have all the cards. It's Xavier that needs to show up with an incredible round. Better now than in round number 15. So if you do it now, you put all the pressure on them when you go over to the defense yourself. You're going to be putting all the favors in your own hands, in your own head as well. So make sure that this round counts. Both of these teams obviously are going to be fighting for their lives in this round. Savior coming into overtime on the attack. So seeing something similar as far as lineup goes to what we had last time, even though they are coming up to the upstairs site. Once again, a very aggressive defensive hold when it comes to the closet and the, the games room wall from Fav Gaming, but they haven't made the mistake of placing the Goyo shield in the closet itself as that so nearly killed Shin last time. And actually he took a significant amount of damage right then. 
see him on minimal HP, <laughs> just like Nafew getting down straight away by oh. the C4. And Fab Gaming are going to take the opportunity to get aggressive. Red Sun does respond in kind as he peeks around through into oh, Dorms, trying to get what he can. Onagiri joins into the fray, and they've received the Adrenal Surge from the Thinker as well. So that gives extra power to these attackers who really want to be taking down the remaining three defenders. Afro still really tucked in deeply inside that bedroom. Having to boom bad in his advantage as the cell must now go off to put some pressure onto the actual attic side of things. Redson has the opportunity because of this to uh, to actually move in from T2 into attic and that seems to be exactly what he's exploring right now. Getting his drone through the rotation he made before just to get some information out. There he goes. Spots out number two. Onigiri in the meantime will be prone as well. Grenades are being tossed in. A bit of a fire going on as number two will be taking some damage. The second grenade will be tossed through all the way deep. It looks like hoping to go through that rotation, but it will stick. It bounces back. This will not reach that one shield that they hope to take care of. But look at number two. He's rotating around. In the meantime, is Onigiri aware of this? It doesn't seem like it's a jump. Oh, wow. will be coming. He's going to oh, be able wow. to get that kill. Number two with incredible game center. Beautiful grenade being tossed in, but not able to stop the plant from happening. But it has to be number two that actually does it. Yes, he will be able to stop it. It's going to be Onigiri now. Uh, Rexon, I mean. In the 1v2 situation, doesn't spot out the player on his left. And five are on match point now. How the tables have turned. Everything looked like it was so in Xavier's lap. And now they've just picked it up and handed it over to their opponents. Fav Gaming, so close to taking this round. Overtime match point, as you say. And the question is, are they going to be able to keep it up? Fav had a really, really tough time on their attack. So tough, in fact, they only managed to take five of their attack... Oh, sorry, one of their attacking rounds. <laughs> against, they didn't take five of their attacking rounds. That would be a very different game so far. But the point is, is are they going to be able to do it here? This is where it really matters. Because... If they do lose this, once again, they're on that 7-7 draw and you go to that 15th round. And Xavier have another chance. This is your opportunity to take that chance away from them, but you have to pull yourself together. You have to close your eyes, breathe it all in and say, okay, the first half didn't work out in our favor. What can we change? How can we be swifter? How can we be more coordinated? And how can we ensure that this win lands in our hands? The win is what they want, and Xavier is trying to make sure that Fav will not get it right now. Mirror is out, the Black Mirrors will be deployed, the Banshees as well. The Mew Jammers are going to be making sure that the walls are not freely opened up by an ace on Taipom, that is, as they're not using any Tetra. The Tetra is not there, they'll have to actually get in or use grenades to get rid of these Mew Jammers or use the Maverick to open up. It's a very flexible lineup that Xavier is running. And look at Napew. Napew is already setting himself up for a late flank again. As he is uh, just making his position known. He's just, all right, spot me out. Just got a drone in, you know exactly where I am. However, he uh, here's the white windows being punched open. So he's not gonna be uh, as willingly to rotate back all the way to the top floor anymore. Well, he managed to get a drone before he sends himself back down into the basement but yeah you have to remember Napu caused so many time related issues for fav gaming back on the first half and that's why you see afro guided by this gemini looking out for any of that roaming presence and they're just checking to see if the freezer is clear which of course it is not as onagiri has situated himself down there made himself a nice little home and that's going to help Fav Gaming make their decision. Something that they couldn't do fast enough back in the first half. All right. Drones coming out. They're trying to get all the information out. Trying to get to be able, on the likes of Fav, to pick up their second attacking round of this game. It would be huge. It would be meaning that they win this matchup. And thus proceed forward. With the uh, Swiss system, of course, which is uh, isn't a book hold system as well as a tiebreaker. All pretty complicated. We'll get back at that in later weeks.
and it starts mattering more, probably I will yeah. come back on that. Um, yeah, you're, you're definitely a fan, but I'm definitely a fan of the fact that Fav Gaming seem to have changed in terms of how fast they are deciding what to do. Just starting to open up blue now, but the good thing is they do have the meeting hatch open that allows them to apply the vertical pressure. They might have the opportunity to drop down there later on when they do want to be making the plant. Afro, he's just trying to hold an angle into Freezer, but he's going to have to move forward at some point if they want that area clear, which they will to prevent the later crossfires. A Vulcan shield is still protecting that part of the map, and in goes a nade into Laundry, but it won't be catching anyone out. Smoke okay, are being tossed in here by Typhon to cover out for the drop. He's going to be trying to move in as quickly as possible, but no one is right behind that mirror window. C4 is going to be short as well, but a pre-fire wow. will definitely land. And it seems like indeed as three kills just suddenly come in, that Xavier are able to pick this one up as Napier picks up yet another one as well. It's all up to Shin now in a one-on-four situation with 10 seconds left. And there's only one way this can go. There's no way he can find all of them. Not with this magazine, not with these five seconds left. It is Xavier to draw things up yet again. 7-7 seven, seven will be the score. <laughs> One he will pick up, but that's about it. We are going to round number 15. And that Roma, the Napew on the Jaeger, who we said was a problem, we knew this for Fav, turns out to be their demise. Obviously a bitterly disappointing round for them, given the fact that they were so close to that victory. But now, of course, they return to their more comfortable side of things back on the defense, and they're going to be going down to the basement as well. This is their last chance to prove that they have what it takes to beat out Xavier on this map, something that they weren't able to previously do before. It's up to Xavier now to show that they can get one last attack together on the laundry supply room. Attackers need to locate it's their last the chance of winning this. Fav are fighting back hard. They have the advantage. They are on the defense. They brought the Warden as well to try and fight against these smokes, against these flashes. Knowing, of course, that those smokes that we've seen before, we've seen Faf just use it. You use a smoke to cover your drop. What if a Warden is on the other side of that smoke? He's just going to be able to gun you down. If that is what Faf manages to do with that, with that Warden, it will be paying its worth. Well, more than double. Imagine double warden, you'd get to see so much. Imagine just him instead of, you know, like Rook armor, he can just hand out Google Glasses. <laughs> Google Glasses. Is that what the kids call them? That's what I call them. Oh, are you the kids? I don't know what else to call it. Smart Glasses? Is that? I believe that's I, the I actual name, isn't it? I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what they're actually Jack called. I just don't really refer gonna, to the glasses. I'm gonna find it now. They're his laser eyes. Let's go with that. It doesn't shoot lasers, though. Yeah, but shush. Oh, we're I... not here. We're not here to be accurate. Well, I suppose we are as far as the cast goes, but. I, I, yeah, okay, maybe that's a bit more important. Well, either way, maybe he'll be able to get a decent amount of value uh, as this happens, because as you mentioned, the smokes are, of course, going to be brought out by Scatman once again. He's here on the ace, something that they didn't have available to them in the last time they played Oregon. And uh, They are called the Clan Smart Glasses. They have it. Yeah, that really does sound like the sort of product uh, like a 56-year-old man would buy. Are you are you age shaming him now? Maybe I am. You definitely are. That's How that's not cool Warden? in this in this match point right now. Warden is uh he's one eighty three. He's forty nine year olds. Well, there you go. And he's also holding behind a shield in blue. Now they don't want Xavier to be coming in through that way. We saw what happened to Shin last time. He got a bit stuck. It wasn't very nice. So nice indeed, as uh, Shin again will be finding himself here and you know how sometimes you troll your teammates and casually just lock them out, that's exactly what they did the last time around but he actually managed to win the round because of it as he uh, he was able to stick down there. No, 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 I'm, I'm often the one who received the bullying instead of being bullied <laughs> but grenades are being tossed out here, not going to be able to find anybody yet, Typhon is in Harry Potter just standing by, a drone will be coming out, surely that will be giving away the position of this one and as the 60 second mark just ticked by 
Fav, they feel the wind coming closer. They feel it coming closer and closer while Xavier are feeling it slipping away. Smart glasses are being activated just in case a flashbang will follow, but of course it's not the case. Let's see, four comes through, but a little bit of damage will be done into Anagiri. Not enough to actually get that kill, and there's the cover. Napier will be running in, dropping from the hatch, able to pick up a double kill. That's a huge one, and it might be right winning in just a little bit in time. The uh, adrenaline surge has been activated as well. Here comes a little bit of shot, but double uh, impact actually to come through, and Afro still going aggressive here, able to pick up that kill. Number two will find one as well. Suddenly, we'll find ourselves back in a three and three situation. The flick of number two will will fail, but Onagiri is there with the trade. We are in a 2-2 two and, two and still counting down. Redson has side control, and all they need to go for now is a plant. And Nagiri will go on the defuse, or in the flank watch, I must say, able to pick up Afro. The plant will go down. It's oh. Redson, but here he comes. It will be cancelled out. The time will run out. There's nothing he can do. He needs to go for this running. Will he get no the kill? Way. No, he will not. Chloroform will win it. He will manage to clutch it. It's Fav to win the game. It's Fav to win that final round. And it's Xavier to fall, even though they had a super good opening in the round. Napier able to get that double kill. Onigiri right after to come for the refrags. But it's Fab to walk away victorious. That was so close. And as Xavier were coming in with all the kills that you could ever want, Fav came back with the revenge and they managed to make it work. Chloroform, I said before, he was the guy who was always ensuring those final kills of the round and he did it right when it mattered the most. Fav, who struggled so much on that first half, really, really pulled things back. They definitely brought it back. Savior, they seem to be making it a quick one after that 5-1 half time, but there's always two sides to a game of Siege. So a quick upper analyst to see where it exactly went wrong for Xavier. We are back.